So you can you can hear me through the mic or not? No. Try this one. Use this one. Okay. Thank you for coming. We have a mic that works now. So a lot of you know Dan from his work in town, um, from the Conservation Commission, and also every possible uh, water and power and uh, hiking thing that goes on in this general community in this part of the state. Um, you may not know who he was before he came to Vermont a couple of years ago. Um, he has a, um, a bachelor's degree from MIT in astronomy, a PhD from EU, uh, also in the same, and wrote a book about the history of astronomy. Um, but what's more relevant probably is the stuff that he did after that. So he also had many, many careers, including uh, being a, um, a technical writer for one of the first computer companies. Um, he was a, um, an excellent cabinet maker. And uh, he was a high school teacher for physics and astronomy, so you can look forward to some clear explanations today of everything that he has to talk about. The most relevant thing to his history for now is that he became enamored of eclipses while he was in graduate school and saw two before I met him. But he introduced me to the first one of my life in 1998 when we went to Aruba. And I said, is that the best three minutes of my life? I <laughs> can't end now. So we've been chasing them ever since. And the one that um, you, I hope you will all see next month will be his 14th. So um, they are wonderful, and I hope that you all have a chance to see the one in April, and that you also fall in love with them and want to go to some more after that. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan right now. Um, OK, um, before I really get into my talk, there's one thing I want to do to make sure, just, just for in terms of safety make sure everybody knows how to use this. I'm sure you all do, but since uh, these were given to me by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, they want to make sure that I did a safety thing first. Okay. What is a solar eclipse? 
This is an annual eclipse, not totally right in the center yet, but the moon is a little bit in front of the, uh, of the sun. And there it's almost, almost center. Uh, so you can see that is, that is uh, an annual eclipse. Okay, I, don't, I hope the rest of these uh, slides come out, but we'll find out. Okay, let's go back. Okay, well, that's a total. Okay. Um, you can see this is slightly overexposed, but the problem with, with cameras is you can either get the fainter stuff up way out at the edge of the corona, but then the inner corona is overexposed. Or you can get stuff that's in close, but then you don't see any of the any uh, the eye, on the other hand, is still, the photographic stuff is pretty much linear response. The eyes are, are logarithmic. They, so you can see bright stuff and dim stuff at the same time. So no picture you see of a total solar eclipse will do it justice. There's just no way. Uh, some people do take a picture of this inner corona, and then the middle corona, and the outer corona and do the fancy stuff with the uh, UI computers to combine everything uh, and make it look like the one I had up there to begin with. Uh, but the eye is the better instrument for viewing this. Oh, yeah, okay, let's see if I can get that to Okay, hey. <laughs> October 10th, uh, New Mexico, there. 
And that one was, uh, that was on the border of Egypt and Libya back in 2006. Um, okay, geometry. Okay. Uh, this basically shows so obviously not a, not as model, not a scale model here. Um, but but it, it indicates, you know, if you're if you're sitting out here up here, you'll be able to see this side of the sun, and you can see that side of the sun. You can see the whole sun. No glimpse. If you're in this within this frame, you know, you'll be able, say you're here, uh, you'll be able to see most of the sun, but you cannot see this edge of the sun. And as you get in closer and closer and closer to the black dawn, uh, you'll see uh, more and you'll see less and less of the sun. Once you are in this area here, this is called the penumbra, and it's called the umbra. Once you're in the umbra, no matter where, which way you look, you can see you're not going to be able to see the sun. You look this way, you, know, you can't see the sun. So that's when the sun is totally blocked out. Okay, uh, let's have another one. Oh, you did that. Okay. That's this is just a different view showing the same thing. Uh, there's the orbit of the Earth, and the uh, uh, this one is uh, this little dot here is hitting the coast of the west coast of Africa. That little dot, as the moon moves and the Earth moves and rotates, that little dot will go across the, the, the Earth. But you got to remember. It's only about 100 to 150 miles wide. It would be less in certain places. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't hit much of the Earth at any one big place. That's why they're so rare. It's not that they don't, they happen twice a year. Uh, maybe not total, but uh, partials and annular and total. So you, know, you get a couple a year, but you gotta travel this year. Okay, let's try it. Okay, why isn't there an eclipse every month? You know, if the Earth is going around, I mean, moon's going around the Earth, they should get in front of the sun every month. But the, uh, they had a problem with the, uh, the uh, contractor that was building the solar system. And he didn't get or she, uh, the, the orbit of the moon's uh, orbit, it got tilted a little bit. Yeah. So, most, a lot of months, when it comes around, it's going to go in front of the sun, it doesn't go in front of the sun, it goes above the sun. Then it goes, sometimes it goes below the sun, so you never get that line. You've got to get exactly like sun, moon, earth, or you don't get the effects. It's above, or below, no effects. Okay. This shows the same thing. This shows where you can have it. Okay, so we got this. This is the plane of the Earth going around the sun. Okay. These tilted little squares, rectangles, whatever, they are, that shows the, the plane of the moon's orbit, so it's tilted a little bit. Not by much, five degrees, but that's enough. So, you can see when it's like here, the sun, you can see the shadow of the moon is above the Earth. Of course, if you wanted a, a lunar eclipse, uh, you're not gonna get a lunar eclipse because the sh shadow of the Earth is above the Earth, above the moon. Uh, on the other side, it's the other way around. Here, instead of being above them, it's below. However, if it's here, there's the sun, there's the moon, there's the earth. One line, you can get 
the eclipse. Because on the other side of this, you have the sun. Let's <laughs> see, whoops. Yeah. Um, same thing. You've got the sun, the moon, the earth. Yes. So it's only on those nodes, those, those places where that you get that line, everything lined up correctly, and you get the eclipse. Okay, let's try that. This just shows uh, the path. I'm sure you've seen this on the news and in the magazines and everywhere. Um, this is where I originally thought about filming. Um, but then I checked and it wouldn't let me bring in my automatic rifle into Mexico, so I decided maybe that might be good. Um, a lot of people are going here, the hill country of Texas, because the probability of seeing it is greater than here. But because I live here, I am going to stay here, and whether right or not, we're going to experience a place here. Hopefully, we will be sunny. Again, this shows the central line, you know, close, close to Rochester. There's us, and then off into Canada. Uh, that's another one. Oh, poor Barry. Just outside. <laughs> <laughs> no. Montpelier. The thing is, and of course, the closer you are to the edge of the shadow, the shadow passes over you quickly, so you get a short eclipse. So what you really want to do is be on the center line. Uh, when I went to one in France in 1999, um, we left Paris, the Porian River. And the weather forecast in Normandy, which should be clear, you can go towards, you west towards the uh, English Channel, or La Manche. Um, and I had a, on a map, a, 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 the center line drawn in, a very detailed map, very zigzagging back and forth, along dirt roads and whatever, and just before the totality sky, and uh, we pulled over in the hay field and we saw it. Okay, there's a clip, okay, that's okay. You can see that the Richard is right on the, on the line. In fact, it goes right through uh, sort of the back of the elementary school. Basic facts about the sun. Okay. The sun of the sun has a temperature of about 10 million degrees. I have Celsius for a salt and center rate. Um, um, 5 by 5, 5 by 9, 18 <laughs> million degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the surface of these two. Um, that's when we look at the city from the side, if uh, you look to the west, you'll see the what you don't like the surface of the sun. That's uh, called the photosphere. It's it's a uh, it's about ten thousand feet. It's uh it's uh, enough to melt the iron. It's not a burn. Um, you ever done blacksmithing and you heat up your iron too hot or something's like a sparkler? Yeah, that's not even up there. They were close to that. The pearly white glow around the sun, what I call the corona. Uh, it's the beautiful thing that you want to see. We all want to see. Strangely, it has a temperature of millions of degrees. Once you get up that high, it's not on the center of the Celsius. Um, it's hot. The question is why does, you know, you expect the center of the sun to be really hot and as you go out further and further, the temperature is going to go down. That makes sense. You build it down far. You walk away from it. It gets cooler and cooler. But something happens. And that was, uh, that's still an area of, uh, of um, investigation. And it's not entirely clear how that energy gets from the surface of some other. Of course, the corona itself is, you know, at that height, it's no longer, mostly not 
It's, it's, it's a plasma. It's a lot of free electrons running in here. It's, um, but the thing is, it's also very, very uh, tenuous. It's, it's not very dense at all. So um, if it were, if it were very dense, then we would be able to see the corona during the daytime. But it's not giving off that much light because there's not much mass there. That's why we can look at it for the two main points. Things. Oh. Well, we only have one issue. Do not look at the sun. Uh, okay, well, uh, that's okay. We went on that. Uh, you can look and do look. Um, same as for your camera. If you're going to take a picture of partial page, you might want to cover the lens with something to uh, you know, take up your glasses. Uh, during the total phase, you're free to shoot. Okay. Uh, things you may see. Little black dots. Those are sunspots. Now, why do you think they're black? Well, oh, it's because they're cold. Well, it depends on what you call cold. Uh, they, are, they appear darker because they're cooler than the rest of the photosphere. I wouldn't stick my hand in there. Uh, it's a few hundred degrees cooler, so it appears, so it's putting out less light, so it appears to, but it's still burning. Oh, I should go back to um, If you had solar glasses in the past few weeks and looked at the sun, there was a sunspot that was so huge you could pick it out easily with your almost your naked eye, but uh, your glasses assisted eye. It was just absolutely huge. Okay, next. Okay. And this is just a show some detail. Uh, just like we, the shadow of the moon's uh, shadow on the Earth, we have the umbra, which is the dark center, and the penumbra around it. We have the same names for the, uh, the, the sunspots, because it's dark in the center and um, lighter around. Basically, it's magnetic fields have just made the gas expand a little bit and it's cooled it off. So it's cooled off a little bit given the depth of the. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, this is an old, this is an old uh, version of the <laughs> presentation. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to go through this quickly. Now, the, uh, I was hoping to show you. The sun through a telescope. It's called a hydrogen alpha telescope. It has a filters and two primary barometer built into it, and it will isolate one tiny wavelength of light. Uh, it's the light that's given off by hydrogen. It's the red light given off by hydrogen. Um, it's called hydrogen alpha. Um, and it's wavelength in angstrom, so there's a good one that everybody knows. Uh, it's 6,563 angstroms. Uh, one summer I was going out to the National Solar Observatory to do some work there, and uh, I hadn't probably looked at a map, but I knew. When I got there, I saw the sign. He says, I know what that is. Uh, that's that's a hydrogen alpha line uh, in, in angstroms, and the other thing you see along that is besides besides the uh, island marker, you also see elk. Just about every night, I just point down. Okay, next one. Uh, as you go in towards the observatory, of course, there's this line that says the penumbra, of course, uh, and then you get closer, you get the penumbra. It's an in joke by solar astronomers. What else do we have here? Uh, that's, that's the solar telescope. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Just before and after Tokai, those are things to look for. You may see something called Bailey's Beads. Just before this, uh, the moon completely covers the sun, you'll see light streaming through valleys in the moon. It's not, it doesn't last long, um, but 
You'll see these little like beads of the light on the edge. Those are really it's just streaming through. If it, the, uh, the moon was blue like the other ball, you would get this. Because there's little bridges and valleys, yeah, you get this white streaming through the sky. This is the time I bring it back to. And if you want to uh, propose uh, to somebody, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, make her a ring that looks like that. <laughs> Hey, this has been noon time. Huh? Um, again, this is this is this is uh, typically where you'll see it. This is a This is uh, purely. This wasn't planned. This was pure luck. I was just shoot, 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 shoot. As as the uh, the moon was uh, uh, actually in this case the moon was the just leaving us coming off uh, and I just happened to get just pure uh, that's, that's the best time in room. Uh, uh, let's see what else we Oh the other thing you may see, you won't see them like this, but if you um, if you look at oh one thing I should make is if you use if you use binoculars Only during the total days. And if you're going to use binoculars, it might be a good idea to have a timer. And what you do as soon as the as soon as the uh, moon has covered the photosphere, the bright part, and you see the corona, then you can bring up your binoculars and look, and you'll see the detail of stuff around it. And you may see some of these. Uh, this is through a telescope, so it won't look that big. But there have been some pretty big, uh, what they call bronze and arcs of gas shooting out uh, in the past, uh, past half year. I was using that telescope. I can see them. They've been really, some really big ones. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of those. Uh, the reason for a timer is, uh, we don't need a timer, but don't look at through your binoculars for more than a minute. Because you don't want to be looking through your binoculars when the sun comes back out. So do it beginning a little bit. Yeah, see the detail, put your binoculars down, and observe. Okay. Uh, other things to look and listen for. One of the things that's very, very clear is as we get almost to totality, shadows get sharper and sharper. It's, it's so weird that people say something that's strange here. They don't realize the shadows. Because because the sun goes across a, a you know half a degree on in the sky, you know, you actually have a little number on the ground next to your shadow. That disappears and gets smaller and smaller as, as uh, more and more of the sun disappears. So in the end, your, the penumbra that you're seeing up for shadows of trees or your, your body or whatever, you know, it's, it's tiny. So it becomes, the, the shadows are very sharp. Um, I'm not sure about behaviors of birds and animals. Uh, Somebody was going to do a study of, you know, you know, snow crickets. Uh, the number of chirps uh, per minute depends on the temperature. So they were going to record the rate of snow cricket chirp storm as it clips for rest, and the temperature drops. Yeah, that's something that drops. Temperature will drop. Uh, I don't think we're going to find any snow crickets here, today. but. Are there any other, are there any birds around? Do they do behave any different? Um, uh, yeah, what are those birds you have to choose? The American woodcock. Yeah. I'm curious we'll, if it will come out twice that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the things. The other thing, which is very difficult to see, is um, people sometimes put down a, a white sheet on the ground 
just before totality and just after totality, you'll see these funny little waves of light just running across the ground. Um, and of course, it's on grass, and you're just not going to see it. But if you have a sheet or uh, a sandy beach or something like that, you, you can see that they're faint and they're hard to see. Uh, and they flicker. So, um, and they're probably, I think, they're, because the atmosphere has air, you know, there's different densities, the light traveling from this tiny little bit of sun coming past the moon, it's going through all these little pockets of air, different densities. It's a little hotter, a little colder, a little more dense, a little less dense. And so it's a kids spin around and they, they get these sort of ripples. It's really kind of neat, but very, very difficult to see. Uh, okay, now we get to history. Um, this is what we call zero cycles. Uh, isn't there some guy named Saros that we're not going to talk about today? Okay. Um, predicting eclipses. You know, as early as the uh, fifth century before the Common Era, uh, the Babylonians were making astronomical observations and recording them. They were sitting out there with their little styluses and their there were things of clay, and there were well, it's nice doing this, and I'm doing that. Uh, well, after, certainly by doing that for two centuries, uh, they actually figured some stuff out. <clears throat> One of the things they noticed is that eclipses repeat every 18 years, 11 days, and 8 hours. Well, it's not exactly 8 hours. That's really that many days. So it's, it's almost a third, but not quite. And it's really, it's, uh, if you do it in normal years, and you ignore leap years, it's uh, 18 normal years plus 15 days, plus a million hours. Uh, but you gotta throw in some, you gotta lose, take some days off of leap years. So that, that's why it goes to 11 days. It can go to 10 days. Um, but on average, it's uh, and it's so. What happens is, if you see an eclipse, you know another one's going to happen. Eighteen years, eleven days, and eleven to thirty days later. Now, our eclipse is number thirty of the Cero series one thirty nine that began in fifty nine one and will end in twenty seven sixty three. Uh, I didn't see the first one, and I'm not going to see the second last one. But I have seen this will be the third one. Uh, if you want to stick around, it's going to be a really long one of 2186. Uh, maybe I'll come back again. Back. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so. Recent ones occurred, 2006 in Egypt. We saw that one. Uh, we did not see the one in the Pacific. Uh, 1970. Uh, that was my okay, That was my the first eclipse that I saw down in North Carolina. So this is uh, this is completing the the three zero cycle. Okay. Yeah, what about the 18 hours? Well, as I said, it's not exactly eight hours. I said 18, eight, eight hours. Uh, it's about a third of a day. So what happens in a third of a day? Well, the Earth rotates. So how far around does the Earth rotate in eight hours? There will be a quiz at the end of this. <laughs> so. That's a third of a day, so it's going to rotate about a third of the way around. Uh, 360 degrees in a circle. So it's rotating about 120 degrees. Okay. Now uh, the path of the 1970 eclipse that came up from Mexico and along the east coast, and it uh, went through North Carolina where I saw it, and then it went out past Cape Cod. Um, 
Now, 18 times 3 is about 54. So every 54 years, you know, first, the next one after 1970, it, Earth had rotated around 120 degrees. Then it rotated around another 120 degrees. Now this one, the third one, it's rotated back to almost the same position. Of course, remember it was 0.32, not 0.33 to get to 3. So it, it's not exactly the third. So it's, it's not coming exactly the same path. But it's pretty close. It's coming up through Mexico. And then instead of being off the coast of Massachusetts, it's coming over here. And in fact, this shows some of the eclipses. Um, these are eclipse paths. And you'll notice, let's see, 2024. Oh, that's, that, that's ours. OK, let's go. 18 years earlier. There it is. It's on another part of the year, but it's a very similar path. That happened in 2006, and but and it would, if we were if we weren't for that eight hours, it would happen there again. But now the Earth has got a chance to rotate another third of the way around, and it ends up there. You'll see. You'll notice that. Okay, let's got. Uh, Now this is this is one. This is a short one. It barely nicked Australia. I had some friends who went to see it in uh, Arkansas, um, one of those places, East Timor. Um, That's a very short one. So uh, that was just last year. And 18 years earlier, there's the path for that one. You know, it's almost identical. I just wrote to the Earth is rotating. Same? Good morning. Yeah, back. Okay. Um, same here's when the hit Antarctica just a few years ago. And then 18 years ago, exactly almost the same path. So that's how the Babylonians could predict eclipses. And we can do the same thing too. Okay. Now that's a, this just goes a time lapse of. This is uh, this is a this is a picture that my wife recorded on the border of Libya and Egypt. Um, you know, she, I think it was you took an exposure about every ten minutes, and then and the camera was had a uh, uh, had a filter over it. It's a slightly greenish tinge because in those, those days we were using um, welder's glasses. For welder's glass for the filters. And then at the totality, she pulled the thing off and then took the exposure. Okay. So that's, uh, that shows you the, you can see where the, uh, the moon's, I mean, the sun is uh, getting eaten up by the moon. Okay, more images. Uh, this one is Baja, California. Uh, this is a nice one in that, uh, let's see. Oh, it doesn't really show up here too much. Um, you can see there's a little bit of red here. That's, uh, that's one of those prominents shooting out. Um, there's, oh yeah, here's, I don't know if you can see back there, I can see up here. There's a huge prominence gas. This is gas being shot out, being forced out of the surface of the sun by magnetic fields. So. Um, I wish I could say I took that one, but I did. Uh, I traded for uh, That was Aruba. We met a guy in Aruba uh, who took the previous one. We traded for He didn't get any of Aruba. So, okay, next. Uh, that's France. You can see, they're, they're, each one of these places is different. Um, when the solar activity is very active, it, uh, it tends to. Uh, it tends to be more symmetrical than uh, when the activity is small. I'm not sure why. It seems to be a little bit around, but uh, that's where it seems to be. Okay, another one. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, okay, this uh, this shows the differences in exposures. Um, yeah, totally overexposed. So overexposed. You know, I think this was a, a 
quarter or second exposure. Uh, I got internal reflections off the lenses of the camera. That's not the, that's not another sign. We don't have two signs. Uh, and then I shorter exposure, and then an even shorter. And here you can see the little red dot there. See? Can you see that? That's one of those problems that should be out. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Um, that one shows it very clear. This was a very short exposure, so I didn't get almost none of the none of the uh, corona, but I was able to pull up one of those lots of hydrogen gas being forced out from the surface on magnetic fields. Okay, questions and answers. I think that's what's next, right? Anyway. During the uh, phase where it has the diamond rings and all, mm -hmm. you had your glasses on then or off? That is the transition phase. Uh, at that point, if you were looking and you saw that diamond ring uh, with your glasses on, I don't think you would have any problem. Say that again. Can you, can you turn okay. to the question? Okay, well, repeat the question. Good idea. I should learn how to speak in public. Um, if you get to the diamond ring, then you look at it with your big eye. Um, okay. To avoid being sued, I'm going to say no. Uh, <laughs> but it's the transition. That's probably, at that, the problem is that at that point, there's probably, and it's so short, it probably is not going to have enough light on your eye to do the damage. But if you look, if you try to see it, and you look before, you know, you should keep your eyes open, keep your eyes closed, and open it at the right time. How do you know it's the right time? So chances are, if you want to see the diamond ring effect, try to see it when the sun is exiting. Because well, because you'll notice, you'll see it the side of the, the black hole moon uh, getting a little lighter, a little lighter, and then as soon as so you see any way popping out from the process. But I went to it's very difficult at the time. That's, but you can do it with a, with a photograph. Uh, easier than your eyes. Another trick that people use is, you know, when you go into a dark room, it takes quite a while for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. So Best thing is to close both your eyes and wander around for half an hour. Uh, trip over people's cameras. No, uh, what people do is close one eye. So I have seen people put a patch over their eye. So they'll have one eye that is totally dark, adapted, when the chrome is there. And that is what we When you hear everyone shouting and screaming, be sure to take your glasses off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's another one. Do you want to hear people? Okay, okay. All right. All right. Do you know how fast the uh, opera the is moving? Uh, 2,126 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's real fast. So just make that up. But it's, it's about 2,000. Oh, it's a lot of purpose. Okay, uh, here at 2.15, quarter after two, the moon will start moving in, in front of the sun. Uh, it will reach the total phase, if I remember correctly, at 3.26. And you've got about three and a half minutes before it goes back down again. And you're watching, people will be sitting there and they'll be watching and they'll be waiting, and then they'll be, oh, hello, oh, 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 oh. And then immediately, as soon as totality shows up, everyone's packing up and moving on. Hardly anybody stays to the end. Any other questions? If not, we can do the thing. Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry. I was waiting for the final question. I just want to slightly off topic. Okay. Is there any validity to the green flash? of watching the sunset on the beach 
I've seen it, but it's always been alcohol aided. <laughs> uh, I hope you were drinking Corona. <laughs> Yes, it is true. Um, we were on a cruise into the South Pacific on the Pago uh, uh, It holds about 200 passengers. Um, all a bunch of nerds like us. Um, <laughs> and had two decks. And everybody could gather in the evening for the sunset to look for the green flash. And you would hear one desk. There it is. And then a little later, there it is. Well, because of the elevation difference, they had to sink a little further down to get into the upper down. No, it was only 10, 12 feet. Uh, uh -huh. big difference, man. Yeah. yeah, that's real. I've seen it. Oh, I've also seen a blue flash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's a very complicated physical thing. You know, you've got the refraction of the light, and you've got the absorption, and these two things play against each other, and uh, sometimes you do get a blue flash. I've got pictures of the blue flash as well. Yeah, up there. Any others? Yes. <clears throat> Is there a way to set up a, like a physical camera to view it? I remember doing that back in the Okay, can we set up a physical camera? Let's see. We're viewing for others to view as well. Oh, what do I do with my pinhole camera? Oh, I bet it's in that. I bet it's in that. What's the stuff up here? Uh, yes, you can. Um, oh, I've got This is a fancy one. Yes. It's a piece of cardboard with a hole in it. it this one's August 21st, 2000. This was uh, handed out by NASA during the last great American office. Uh, I find their hole too small. I would make the hole bigger. Take a pencil. Uh, that'll, that'll be good. And you can um, project, it, project it on uh, a screen, a screen, you can put it on a, a piece of paper. You can, if, you're, if you're on a sandy beach, you can do that. Uh, that's against the wall. Um, the other thing I'd like to use is a collar. <laughs> so that one, lots of images. <laughs> in fact, oh, let's see if I, let's, oh. Uh, I thought I had this one. Um, this, <laughs> this is an image taken with a cell phone. Now, uh, I'm not a big cell phone person. And, uh, in fact, I got it about a year ago. Uh, but I actually was able to get a picture through that telescope there of the sun. This is the sun looking just this is just at the hydrogen alpha line. Uh, the one wavelength of light down to half an angstrom. And you can see the gas shooting out here, and here, and here, and, and here. I mean, the, the, the sun has just been shooting all over the place. Uh, and if you look closely, you'll see there's like dark bands here, and here, and here, and here. Um, those are these same gas arches, but they're coming out towards us. And because they're cooler than the photosphere, the surface of the sun, they appear dark. Okay. Um, oh, I'm talking about this. Um, I was looking for pinholes.
There's a colon. You can see the little crescents. If you want lots of crescents, there's a lot of crescents. Oh, right here. If you want to make sure you uh, remember what the <laughs> name was, you can do that. What size hole was that? You Take a pencil. <laughs> pencil size? Yeah. I think you're drilling something through. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did this out of the spur of the moment. Uh, grab a piece of cardboard and a pencil. Okay. Cool. You'll find um, your hole doesn't have to be perfect. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, I, one of the benefits of uh, going to Eclipse is you might as well stop at places along the way. Hey, we're going to Eclipse in Chile. Let's go to Peru for Machu Picchu. Um, if you're going to uh, Egypt to burn Eclipse, you might as well see some camels. Um, <laughs> Or maybe some periods. Or the sphinx. Uh, now I got distracted. Um, oh, there's another one. The one north of the Arctic Circle at Svalbard, Norway, little islands where there's more polar bears than people. Uh, you always want to make sure you have an army guard. <laughs> You know, when the polar bears come in, they look at the telescope, they don't like the view, they eat you. Um, okay, now, oh, uh, let's try this. Okay, I am going to copy this. Control C. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Google comes up. Oh, here it is. Let's see if this works. Okay. Um, make sure my sound is on. Eclipse of 2017 out in Lundo <coughs> State Park in Wyoming. Let's get the. Yeah. They're just seeing the uh, shadow band. There were a lot of what we call eclipse virgins. <laughs> the National Solar Observatory uh, had an in with this state park because 
the, uh, the administrative secretary had a cabin there, and she knew the guy that ran the place. So they got a whole campsite for the National Solar Observatory people. And uh, these are people that study the sun all the time. And that's just, well, for a lot of them, this was their first solar eclipse. I know that's not true of the director of the observatory because he saw, he saw his first solar eclipse when I did in North Carolina back in 1970, when we were both graduate students. You know. but, uh, I'm going to make a little detour here so everybody can see the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's get towards the end. Okay, we'll get towards the end. Um, okay, so pretty soon you can begin to see it's getting to be getting lively around. Uh, the upper right hand corner there, here it comes. Should we when, when do we start looking? Like, I think it's a little uh, around 2.30 maybe that day? I will start looking probably around 5.30. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, so we uh, <laughs> Right, I, I would, if you're going to take pictures, you might want to set up before 2 o'clock. Um, just to make sure you've got everything. Um, there are all sorts of tricks. This is a bit windy, and you got a tripod. What I do is I fill a gallon milk jug with water and hang it in the cord. That'll stabilize your tripod. Um, but yeah, you know, basically, from as I said, at quarter after two, you know, people will be sitting there looking. At Oh, hey, it, it's coming in, it's coming in. Uh, um, and some people will see it immediately, some will be 10 minutes before they notice it. It's starting to come in. And then it's a long wait. And, uh, and then, then it happens. And the city is full of Oh, this is for Burlington. No, I'm not Burlington. Oh, oh, one another one. That's it. That's so tough. Yeah, that's right. Please, please. Sorry. So, 214. Yes. Well, just to, just to mention, Edisburg is planning on um, the two Lincoln Park and Taylor Park starting at 2. So, set up this for those who want to volunteer at noon. Mm -hmm. but, um, but that's our plan. Yeah. And you're going to be meeting. We're planning 
on uh, making the um, elementary school, Richford Elementary School grassy area available for tripods, uh, telescopes, whatever. Um, we will have, we'll pack as much, many cars in parking as we can. Uh, probably, I, we haven't decided at a meeting on Tuesday with town people here to uh, decide exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we've been talking about getting a shuttle bus from the various parking areas in town to shuttle people over because there's a limited amount of space for parking. Right. So there's also, we, we, we've been hearing of buses being chartered from Massachusetts mm -hmm. to come. Um. So, <laughs> okay, well, so, um, so, 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 do you know where from Massachusetts? Huh? Do you know where from Massachusetts? Um, the person I heard was that they were talking to Professor Holyoke. Holyoke, okay. Okay, so they're going to be, well, they'll stop the kids. We can do it. I think, I think. But I, I, I think we can plan for outside business. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I suspect whether we want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I know at the Richmond Country Club they're going to open up, so if anyone wants to go up there and view, they're going to have oh, to that's great. whatever up there that people can buy and you can sit and watch. And so they've been talking about that as well. Thanks for being welcoming because that hasn't happened. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a lot of. Canadian, yes, that's my uh, Because you come down from Montreal, um, well, there's something, but you know, if you want those few extra seconds, so, <laughs> I mean, they could go further, uh, further east, but uh, you know, we're closer. Uh, yeah. No. You would mention using a filter if you're going to take photos. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to put the um, the glasses over your cell phone, or would a welding lens be better? Um, the, the solar glasses will work. Just make sure you got it over the, the lens. Um, um, welders, you know, um, welders' glasses work fine. Uh, in fact, I used to use that in, before they came out with this Mylar stuff um, back in the old days. And uh, the only problem is that gives a green tint to your photographs. But other than that, well, it's fine. Uh, but I would use, I would use, uh, instead of looking through it, just put one of the lenses over your camera lens and try it. Cool. That's it. trees, uh, anywhere that uh, you can, the bees, if there's a place that they can collect pollen, they'll love to have a house there. They, they, they will put about uh, uh, 10 uh, larvae in, uh, egg, eggs into each each of those little tunnels that is drilled in there. Uh, next year, you'll have lots and lots of bees to run around you know, pollinating all your, all your flowers. So Dan, when's the next one in Aruba? Oh, <laughs> 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 right, well, uh, you had your chance. Sorry. We should all clear skies on April eighth. Um,